All right, so we are on lesson 5-5, continuing our division unit. Remember, we've already done the guided practice, so we will be looking at starting question number 5. So here, we have 71 divided by something equals something with 2 remainder. Well, I see my 2 remainder, my 2 leftovers are right here, so I know that part's right. And how many groups am I breaking up into? Well, I see there's 1, 2, three groups, so I'm breaking up into groups of three. So what am I left with? Well, I see each group has two tens and one, two, three ones. So I have 23 with two left over. Going to our next one, we're looking. I don't have any remainders, anything left over, so I have a remainder of zero, which is why I don't see anything written for my remainder. So let's check. I have one, two, three, four groups. So I'm breaking up into four groups. And I have one, two, three, four tenths, along with one, two, three, four ones. So 176 divided by four is 44. Our next one, draw pictures. So I need to copy this kind of model that I have right above. So I have three groups. So I'm going to have one, two, three groups. And I start with my largest place value. So I start with that 10. So I have one, two, three. So what do I do with that leftover 10, that 4 tenths? Well, I break it up into 1s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now I have these 6 ones also. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have to now split this up. And so I have 10 plus 6. So I have 16 ones right here. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, with one left over for 16. So what do I have? Well, I have one 10, and then one, two, three, four, five ones, with a remainder of one right here. So my answer is 15 remainder one. Going to our next one, here I have four groups. So I'm going to actually start with my model first this time of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so I have four groups, so I'll have 1, 2, 3, and 4. And let's check. I have 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. I can't split those two tens up, so I need to trade them for one. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I have another ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what do I have? Well, I have ten, twenty, twenty-five. So I need to break that twenty-five up into four groups. If I know my multiplication facts, I know that four times six is twenty-four. So that means there's going to be six in each group. So I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, with that one left over. So now I can figure out I have one ten from right here, and one, two, three, four, five, six in each group. So my answer is 16, with the remainder of 1 being that guy right there. Let's head to our next page now. Perhaps we'll head to our next page. Here we go. So starting with number 1, we have a model. A company with 65 employees, <coughs> so I'm circling my number, is moving to a new location. All of the employees are divided, so I'm underlining and then putting my math operation into five groups for the move. Write an equation, so what do I need to do? I need to have something with that equal sign and find the number of groups used for the move. So what I have here is I have 65, and I'm breaking it up into groups of five. So there's my equation. If I want to use their variable g, I can put it there. That g, remember, that is just like that question mark, only it's called a variable. So now let's figure out what 65 divided by 5 is. Well, I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 groups. 
and I have six tenths, so let's put those tens in one, two, three, four, five. So this sixth one, I have to trade for ones. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I have these five ones already. So that is ten plus five is fifteen. So I need to break fifteen up into three groups. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So what am I left with? Well, I'm left with g equals thirteen. Or I could write my equation as 65 divided by 5 equals 13. Either one would be acceptable. Moving on to number 10 now. Maya used a drawing to divide 86. She made groups of 17 with one left over. Draw a picture to determine how many groups Maya made. Well, here I see I have 17. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check. So I start with this picture of 17. She made groups of 17, so that's going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, oops, I'm sorry, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so there's 17, and I'm going to keep making those groups until I get to 85. I know it's 85 because there's that one left over, and 85 plus that remainder will be that 86. So 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that would be 34 because I have 17 plus uh, 17. So another one is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 34 plus 17 is 51. I'm not at that 85 yet, so I'll do another one. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. It's 51 plus 17 is 66. And now let's check. So I will have 10 with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have 66 plus 17. That gives me 3. That's giving me 83. So let's check because then I should have 1, but that's going to give me 84. So I'm going to check. I have 17 times. That should be 5 groups. So let's find out where I made my mistake. I see it. This is 85, so my mistake was right here. So let's check. It's 51 plus 17 is not 66, it is 68. And then 68 plus 17 is that 85. So I have five groups. She made five groups. Number 11, a science museum has 2,400 gemstones displayed equally in three cases. So if I'm displaying, I'm breaking that up into groups of three. How many gemstones are in each case? What basic fact did you use to determine the quotient? Well, I know I'm doing this problem. And from our previous lesson, my basic math fact is 24 divided by 3, which is 8. So here, I need to add those, oops, those, oh man, those two zeros to my basic math fact. So there's going to be 800 gemstones in one case. And my basic math fact is that 24 divided by 3. Our next one, Mr. Harold has 268 library books on four shelves in the classroom. He has the same number of books on each shelf. So that same is that division. To find the number of books on each shelf, he divided by 268 by 4. How many tens did he regroup as ones? How many books are on each shelf? Well, what I'm going to do is I have 200, then I have six tens, and eight ones. So let's check. I have four groups. So that's one, two, three, four. I cannot split these hundreds up so into four groups, so I'm going to have to exchange them for ten ones. I'm sorry, ten tens. So my first one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I have another of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have ten and ten, which is twenty, plus these six is I have twenty-six. So let's regroup them. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. So I have twenty six, I use twenty four. So that means I'm going to have two left over, these two right here. So that answers my first part of how many tens did he regroup as one? He regrouped two tens as twenty ones. And so now, remember those tens will become ones. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there I have twenty plus these is eight, so I actually have twenty-eight ones. So now let's break them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. So now I can answer my question of how many books are on each shelf. There are one, two, three, four, five, six tens and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ones. So there are 67 books on a shelf. Number 13, five. So I'm going to write that number next to it. Fourth grade classes from an elementary school took a trip to the United States Capitol. There are 25 students in each class. At the Capitol, a maximum of 40 students were allowed on a tour at one time. What is the least number of students or what is the least number of tours needed so all the students are able to make the trip? Well, first I need to figure out my total students. So my total is I have 25 students in each class and there are five classes. So that is going to be 25 times five. Well, I know 25 times four is 100 plus another group of 25 is 125. So this is my total students. And what I'm doing now is I'm breaking them up into that group of 40. So let's check. Here would be one group of 40, which is not my 125. So here would be two groups of 40, which is 80, which is still not 105. Here's three groups of 40, which is 120, which still doesn't have all of them. So then I would have three groups that were full and I'd have to have one partial group or one part group for those leftover five students since I've only can I get 120 in. So my total number of tours that I would need is I would need four tours. Three would be completely full. One would have five students in it. Ken has 72 marbles. He shares the marbles equally with some friends so they can play a game. Which of the following drawings shows Ken having shared his marbles? Well, it doesn't tell me how many friends he's playing with, so what I have to figure out is, does it equal this 72? So let's check. Here I have three groups of 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So let's check. That is 72, so I can mark this one. But I need to check all of them because this last tricky one right here is all of the models shown. So I have to check to see. So here I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, which, hey, that also equals 72. So my hunch already is that it's probably going to be D. Since it doesn't say select all, I'd have to use this D option. But let's check this C just to make sure. So here I have 10, 20, 30, 40. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. And if we add 40 and 32 together, we do get that 72. So my correct answer is not A, is not B, is not C, but it is D. All of them are correct.